This week on Spectrum News, students are getting excited for early graduation. We'll take a look at some Wildcat athletics. And find out how IWU students are getting into the Christmas spirit. It's all just ahead on Spectrum News. Good evening and welcome to Spectrum News at 7.30. I'm Tim Decker. And I'm Jen Wilcox. Tonight we'll take a look at the big change in student government. Aaron Morrison handed over his title as student body president Monday after members of his cabinet raised concerns about his ability to lead. In his resignation statement, Morrison said, although my goal of greater student involvement in the university is laudable, the means whereby I sought to achieve this goal were flawed. I would have been better served to bring others, particularly the Senate and my cabinet, along with me in the process. He handed the position over to his vice president, Jenna Childress who has big plans for SGA. This is obviously a whole new experience um, being put as president at this point in the semester, but I'm excited and confident for what's coming. SGA will have more structure and members will work with the administration to get the student's voice heard. December marks the end of the fall semester at IWU and for some seniors, the end of their college career. Reporter Chase Evans explains how winter graduation is becoming a growing trend. The end of the semester is a busy time for most college students, but for graduating seniors, there is extra pressure to cap their college career off strong. I'm just so like excited, but I'm, it's a, you know, it's a bittersweet for me. I'm happy to graduate, but I'm not. Faculty and staff are preparing for the largest winter class in IWU history with approximately 132 undergraduates. On December 17th, these seats will be filled with anxious graduates and their families but some seniors will be forced to walk down these aisles without their friends who graduate in the spring. Head Registrar Kim Nicholson says that students can wait until April, but their degree will not be conferred until then, unless requested. If they're specifically related to medical conditions or things that are beyond a student's control, that they are unable to walk at a certain time and need to walk at a later date, then we try to honor that. But these seniors have embraced the opportunity despite being excluded from traditional spring celebrations. They actually get hired for a job more easily when there's, in the springtime, there's a more rush for all the nursing graduates to get positions filled. So I kind of have an advantage graduating when I am. Um, a lot of my friends actually graduated last semester, so it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm ready. <laughs> ready to take their next step outside of IWU. For Spectrum News, I'm Chase Evans. There have been signs of winter weather, and maybe you're wondering what it takes for school to close. A team of faculty and staff meet when necessary to make sure students are safe using a procedure that's been in place for years. Vice President for Technology and Facility Services, John Jones, heads up this team. He says it's important to remember that the process is for safety purposes. It's understanding that, that while we may close campus, uh, we have uh, emergency teams that's still on campus that's making sure that the, the needs of the students are being met. This team wakes up early to observe the roads and sidewalks. If bad weather causes a concern, a recommendation is sent to President Smith, leaving him with the final decision to close or not. The campus students and faculty are then notified when school is closed. The team doesn't meet often, but in dangerous weather, they are ready to take over. It's a difficult week to be an IWU student, which is why Student Activities Council worked hard to give students a break from their studies. Reporter Matt Angst found out how they got them in the Christmas spirit. Christmas is in the air, and with a couple of days before finals, students are starting to feel the pressure. But never fear, SAC came with some Christmas cheer. Donna Pick, Director of Students Activity Council, put together all of these cheerful events. Obviously Christmas is a favorite holiday for a lot of people and a lot of students on campus. So being student activities, we want to listen to the voice of students and provide a variety of different things to do in the Christmas season. It was a week full of events with everything from decorating ornaments to a Christmas morning movie. Also, it's fun for the students to be able to get involved in, in Christmas card making or gingerbread house making or Christmas caroling. Christmas readings by the president. This week's events are not over. There will be a carriage ride and Christmas stories tomorrow. SAC put together a week full of Christmas to give us a little peace before finals. For Spectrum News, I'm Matt Angst. 
Are you going to any Christmas activities this weekend? I'm actually going to a candles and carol service where I'm going to get to learn a little bit about the history of all these Christmas songs we sing every year. When we come back, see how students join with the community to uphold a tradition. Welcome back to Spectrum News. We still have many stories to cover tonight. Jen, I hear you really love a lot of these Christmas tunes these year, this time of year. Definitely, and the Nutcracker is one of my favorites. It's a big tradition with my mom and I. We go almost every single year. Oh. It's hard to connect with people from different generations, but I found out how Handel's Messiah brings the campus and community together. The IWU Chorale has plenty of sound by themselves. But this weekend, they were joined by nearly 80 Marian community members to sing the Messiah. The auditorium vibrated with the sounds of their singing and the thunderous applause from the audience. But it wasn't the applause that made all the hard work worth it. It was the camaraderie and friendships formed during the experience. I'm trying. It was a lot of fun singing with them and, and just the uh, vim and vigor that they bring to it is just super. IWU student and accompanist Leslie Barrow said she loved singing the Messiah and enjoyed meeting the community members. It feels like a little bit of heaven. I just love the Messiah so much. I met a really nice lady that took me under her wing and, and we had a lot of fun together. Through all the hustle and bustle, the combined Messiah Choir made new friendships and connections by making music together. Students took a break from studying last weekend to spread some Christmas cheer to the elderly. Earlier this week, IWU students gathered to make Christmas cards for the residents at Colonial Oaks. The SGA-sponsored event is called Deck the Halls. Students created cards and delivered them while singing carols. More students showed up than expected to participate. And spread Christmas cheer to the residents. You know, Jen, it's really cool to see how IW students, even during the stressful time here at the end of the semester, are still giving back to the community. It's definitely a great thing to see. I was at St. Martin's this weekend, and there were at least 10 IWU students helping out, That's and great. the people always appreciate it. When we come back, we'll watch some highlights from Wildcat basketball. And see how the volleyball team concluded its season. Welcome back to Spectrum News. Matt Lemon is here to talk about how some of our Wildcat athletic teams faced some challenges this week. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Last night, the men's basketball team traveled to Richmond, Indiana to play 10th-ranked IU East. The Wildcats lost a hard-fought game to the Red Wolves with a final score of 79-76. The team's record moves to 9-1 on the season. From number one ranked team to the next, the women's basketball team took on Mount Vernon last Saturday to defend their top spot. After getting off to a quick start with a couple of three-pointers, the Lady Wildcats lost an 11-point lead, quickly heading into halftime. In the second half, the Cougars took advantage of the Wildcats' missed shots, leaving the Lady, Lady Wildcats with a four-point lead with seconds to go. The Wildcats stepped up their defense, and the Cougars kept on fighting and hit a near half-court shot to bring the game within one point. However, the Wildcats were able to, wit to win to have a win over Mount Vernon to keep their number one ranking. The Lady Wildcats now move to 9-0 on the season. The Lady Wildcat volleyball team recently finished their NAIA National Tournament run. The team went 1-2 throughout the tournament and 36-6 and throughout the season. Peyton Thompson, Yui Iwase, and Kelsey Masuda were named the NAIA All-Americans for the team. Congratulations to all the Lady Wildcats on a great season. Coming up this weekend in IW Sports, the women's basketball team take on number 15th ranked Cardinal Stritch at home on Friday, December 9th, and tip-off starts at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, December 10th, the women play Wilbur Force at home, and that tip-off is at 1 p.m. Then the men's basketball team returns to action on Saturday, December 10th, as they face off against Shawnee State University. That tip-off will be at 4 p.m. You know, guys, I'm actually really um, kind of getting upset that I can't come back and watch all these games over Christmas break. Yeah, a lot of them have been very close, so it'll be a shame that we won't be able to see them, but hopefully we'll see good results as well. Well, when we come back, check out a unique IWU club. And find out what the end of the semester stress is doing for Macon Coffee Sales.
Welcome back to Spectrum News. You know, Tim, there are so many different clubs on campus. Yeah, there are definitely all kinds of them, and I honestly have a hard time keeping track of who's doing what around here. <laughs> many students get involved with student organizations, but reporter Amanda Johnson shows one that you may not have heard of. Hey! It's an unfamiliar hobby. Yeah. Twice a week, members leave their shoes at the door for Budokai. Hey. This IWU club involves working on swordsmanship, karate, and staff handling skills. It's a form of martial arts. It trains members in self-defense and teaches Japanese culture. Brittany McMaster believes Budokai will benefit her in the future. I want to um, help girls who are victims of sex trafficking, and I'm not that strong, so I figured that would be a good thing to have in my background. She's seen improvements in just two months. I just, I feel more confident afterward. Instructor Michael Scranton says it's about more than a good workout or self-defense. A sense of unity, a sense of pride, certainly discipline uh, would be a big factor as well. And feeling a sense of accomplishment. Budokai may not be well known, hey! but when members train, their presence is hard to miss. <laughs> For Spectrum News, I'm Amanda Johnson. A new IWU tradition raised over $1,000 for toys for tots. Last weekend, 450 students walked onto a winter, winter wonderland dance floor for the first annual Frosty's Frozen Frenzy. SGA junior class representative and dance organizer Mark, Mike Bruce says Frosty's Frozen Frenzy is just the beginning of the legacy he wants to leave at IWU. Someone's going to ask, oh Mike, what did you do in college? Well, I did the first winter dance at IWU and it just progressed from there. So we want to start a tradition, we want to keep it going, and I'm looking forward to seeing what that takes me and takes the rest of the school. It was the first SGA-sponsored dance to fill the Barnes Student Center banquet rooms. Students are spending long hours studying as the semester wraps up and one campus business is reaping the benefits. Macon Coffee Company is seeing a 5% increase in sales. Business Development Manager Drew Dungy says procrastination is what draws the students towards the smell of coffee. I think it is the lack of sleep on the students' parts. We're all studying for finals, trying to get those last minute projects in, and so a lot of students and myself rely on Macon's caffeine to actually get them through the night and make sure their projects are done. Fresh Brew is giving students one last boost for finals as Macon has sold over 33,000 cups this semester. You know, I can't believe the semester's over. It, it's crazy how fast these 15 weeks have flown by this year. And all of our newscasts are over too. I've learned so much this semester, just different things about anchoring and reporting and producing. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. It's been a very eventful semester and uh, it's a shame that's coming to a close. It really is. Well, that concludes our final newscast. Thank you for joining us this semester. For all of us at Spectrum News, I'm Jen Wilcox. And I'm Tim Decker. Have a great night. Yeah, it's been a crazy time of year.